Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to my video on how to learn vocabulary for IELTS. Learning vocabulary for your IELTS exam isn't just about learning new words and phrases, but about how you use vocabulary to develop good answers. So this video is about how to develop a broad vocabulary, but more importantly, how to really master the vocabulary you choose to learn so that you can use it effectively. Many people waste a whole load of their study time learning lists of words in the hope that they'll be able to force them into their answers and impress the examiner. I'm afraid that it won't impress them. This is completely the wrong way to go about improving your vocabulary. Memorising words and phrases is not the same as learning them. I'm going to show you a better way. One that will save you time and be far more effective. We'll start with the top do's and don'ts of learning vocabulary for the IELTS exam. The top don't has to be don't learn lists of words. With that clear, let's focus on what you should do. First, choose words that can be used in lots of different situations. Second, source words and phrases through active reading and listening. Third, try and work out what they mean from the context. Fourth, practice using them over and over again until you can use them naturally. Fifth, learn topic related vocabulary. And sixth, record new words and phrases in a way that's easy for revision. I'll show you how to do this. An excellent way to source new vocabulary is through active reading and listening, which should be part of your regular study routine. By active reading and listening, I mean paying close attention to what you're reading or what's being said and focusing on what you can learn from it. Look out for words or phrases you don't fully understand. Write them down and if possible, go back and read or listen to them again and see if you can work out what they mean in the context in which they're written or spoken. Read or listen four or five times if you need to until you think you've got it. Then look them up to check. It really is worth the time and effort as it will help you to understand the new vocabulary and how to use it. You'll also be more likely to remember it and internalise it by doing this. You need an organised way to record new vocabulary. Buy yourself a thick notebook. A loose leaf system that you can add pages to works well, especially if you decide to add new vocabulary in alphabetical order. You could also organise your notebook by grammar form or tense. Do what works best for you. What's more important is that you can easily locate a word or phrase you want to review or revise. For each new word, there are several things you should record in your notebook. Meaning, pronunciation, synonyms, collocations and grammar, that is the tense or grammatical structure of the word or phrase. There are more things that you could record, but these five are a must. If you don't know them, then you don't know the word properly, that is 100%, and you probably aren't ready to use it in your exam. If you do have this level of understanding about a word, it will become a powerful and versatile tool that you'll probably be able to use in answers to a range of different questions both in the speaking and writing tests. Make sure that you jot down a few sentences that include the word or phrase to show its meaning and in what situation you'd use it. If you learn just five new words every day for five days a week, you'll add nearly 100 new words to your vocabulary each month. That's at least 500 new words every six months. If that's too much for you to manage, cut it down to a couple of words a day. It's better to know fewer words really well than to have a vast vocabulary that you can't use correctly. Incorrect use will lose you marks in your exam. Review the new words regularly 
and practice using them in sentences. Here's an example of how you could set out the pages in your notebook. You should find all the information you need about your new word or phrase in a good learner's English dictionary. And there are, of course, plenty of dictionary resources online. I find the Cambridge Online Dictionary particularly useful. Like most online dictionaries, it has a button you can click to hear the pronunciation of the word. This is hugely helpful and something to make good use of. For this example, I've chosen the word problem. You can see the six things I've mentioned to include. Grammar, pronunciation, meaning, some words showing the word in context, and on the next two slides, synonyms and collocations. Pause the video and spend a few minutes looking at the layout. Here are some useful synonyms of the word problem. Issue, dilemma, difficulty and predicament. And these are some collocations I think it would be useful to learn. Again, pause the video and read through them, taking note of what I've recorded and how I've set it out. This way of recording vocabulary is just a suggestion. Find the way that works best for you. Two other things you'll probably want to record, depending on the word, are antonyms and idioms. Just to remind you, synonyms are words that mean exactly or nearly the same as a given word, while antonyms are words that mean the opposite of a given word. Idioms, on the other hand, are phrases or word combinations similar to collocations, but it's usually impossible to understand what they mean from the combination of words themselves. Most idioms are used informally, so are fine to use in your speaking test, but they have no place in the writing test, which requires more formal language. With an idiom, you must be 100% certain of how and when to use it before using it in the IELTS exam. If you use it incorrectly, you'll probably sound ridiculous. If you look in any dictionary, you'll see that there's far more information for the word problem than I've suggested you record. In common with many words in the English language, it has several different meanings. You don't need to record or learn absolutely every meaning or way you could use it, just those ways that are going to be most useful for your test. Of course, for many words, you won't have nearly as much information to record as for others, as they just don't have all the variations or forms of use. Again, only select the information that will be really useful. It will take a long time to develop your vocabulary, so be patient and keep working away at it. The average person can learn between 5 and 10 words a day, but it's better to learn 5 or even fewer properly than 10 only partially. And you must, must, must practice using the new words and phrases. Get out of your comfort zone and risk making mistakes. Mistakes can be corrected. Not using new vocabulary makes learning it a complete waste of time. It's only by learning how to use it appropriately and correctly that it actually becomes useful. Now that you know how to learn vocabulary for your IELTS exam, you need to understand what type of words and phrases you should be learning. Well, I've created a video for you outlining the top six types of vocabulary you should focus on. It's on my YouTube channel entitled IELTS Vocabulary – Top 6 Types of Vocabulary You Need to Learn. You'll also find the information on my website ieltsjackie.com. I've put the link in the notes below this video. I will just mention one important type here because I refer to it at the beginning of this video and that's topic related vocabulary. To help you with this I've created topic vocabulary lists on many common IELTS topics. You'll find them on the website. Click the link in the notes below this video. And no, I'm not contradicting myself, having previously said that you shouldn't learn lists of vocabulary. 
These are a resource of hundreds of useful topic-related words and phrases for you to use to answer practice questions. As you do so, you'll be learning appropriate new vocabulary. They're designed to save you time and make practice quick and easy, not as a list of words to memorise. I've even included practice questions and sample answers on each page to help you here too, plus audio recordings of pronunciation. So, please make good use of these vocabulary lists. Just don't try learning them off by heart. That's not what they're for. Well, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.